I really love these kind of shots. They're so simple and they're just, I don't know, they're so satisfying to look at and they also make for great wallpapers on your phone. This really has just been one of those weeks where stuff just isn't going to plan for me. I just recorded the intro to this video and forgot to put the mic on, so apologies for that. I was going to record it and I just thought, I think this just fits into this video better, so apologies for the audio in this first part. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So in the last video I said this at the start of it. This was actually not the next video I planned on doing. I actually tried to record part of another photo idea style video yesterday and the photo did not go to plan. Or and I am actually gonna say that once again, except the video that didn't quite go to plan is actually this one that you're watching. So obviously by the title, you know, this is Quarantine Home Photography Ideas. If you haven't seen the first one, check it out. What I was trying to do was do like a part two of it. We have still got some photo ideas in here. It just didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked. The previous quarantine home photography ideas video was all actually recorded in one day. Pretty much got the shots I wanted to get, put it together, got all the clips on. It worked pretty well. This one is a little bit of a different story. But before I explain things anymore, I'll take you through the first picture which I got, which did go to plan. Okay, so the first idea that I went for was actually inspired by some photos I'd seen on both TikTok and Instagram. And it's when you put the camera inside the fridge and actually take a photo. And it's kind of an interesting angle that you wouldn't normally see of someone like reaching in to grab normally like some sort of cool looking iced cold drink of some sort. I decided to go for a tin of Guinness just because I've been drinking a lot of Guinness and I thought it would look cool in the picture. Our fridge doesn't actually have the greatest of lighting so I had to use the little flashlight on the phone and because it's very bright I thought I'm gonna have to defuse this somewhere or other so I grabbed a little bit of kitchen roll and put it in between the case and the camera and at least that way it diffuses the light and you don't get that real harsh beam of light shining on everything. So a little tip there if you don't have an LED light or it's a tight space and you can't fit the LED light in it. Put a little bit of kitchen roll in between or at least somehow cover the uh, flash on your phone and just turn it on and it as you can see it definitely diffuses it a lot more than normal. I actually did this as well on the little camera because the light was so poor I needed to use the flash on the camera and again it's very harsh so put the kitchen roll over it and it does a pretty decent job. Then it was just a case of setting it up inside the fridge. Apologies for the slow shutter, like I said, there was not an awful lot of light. But yeah, I placed a phone with a little torch light on in behind the tins, and then I set the camera in between just to get the right kind of angle so that the tins were on both sides. Then it was just a case of taking a lot of pictures and trying to see what looks good, what way I should hold the tin. It's a little harder than it looks because obviously you can't see the screen, so you're just hoping that you're in the right position. After looking at the pictures, I thought the tins needed to look colder. They didn't look like refreshing and ice cold enough. So I thought I would wet them a little bit. Ideally, a little spray bottle probably would have given the more realistic effect, but I just put some cold water on it, kind of rubbed it off so that only certain bit beads of water stayed on it. And I think it looked pretty good. It definitely helped. Definitely looked better than, than what it did before. So yeah, I think it worked. Then I just had to take quite a few more pics hope that i was holding it in the right spot and the focus was good and after quite a few photos taking a look through them to see which one was the sharpest which one looked the best the angle and stuff um i was relatively happy with one there are definitely a few things i would change if i was going to do it again there definitely is not enough light on me the shadow over my face and stuff's a little bit annoying and ideally a wider lens and just more lighting inside the fridge would have been better but i think it turned out pretty decent i mean i'm quite happy with it it's a kind of a cool shot so yeah that was the first photo that did go to plan the footage kind of came together and I'm kind of happy with it. Obviously with that photo you need a pretty wide angle lens and we don't really have the widest angle lens. I actually had to use our cheaper little Sony A5000 camera for that shot. So yeah, so if you're gonna try that shot, use whatever lens or whatever camera you have that has the widest angle on it. And you may need a little bit of extra lighting depending on what sort of lighting your fridge has. So the next idea I had was actually to take a picture of my guitar, which I love. Can't really play that well, but it does look pretty cool. So I thought I'm gonna try to get some shots of it my camera battery run out in the middle of it, it started to get a little bit dark and I kind of have to use our living room here which is the best light coming in the window and I don't really have a light set up so not ideal but first few shots I tried just I just couldn't really get them to work. Then I was about to give up and I thought of one more kind of angle that might be cool. I flicked through Instagram and stuff to try and get some inspiration. I actually haven't edited this picture myself but I think it's gonna be pretty good so you can be the judge of that. 
But the general idea of this photo is to just find cool stuff around your house and take a photo of it, whether that's a guitar or your camera or whatever it is, and you can just situate it in a cool spot, find some stuff to maybe sit around it that fits in with whatever the subject is, and just take a cool picture of it. I've actually took a few other ones as well, one of the camera here, which I sat on the little table right beside the window, got a cool reflection on the screen of the phone, and it just looked really cool. I thought the edit worked out well, and yeah, happy with that one. And the other one I got was of my laptop with kind of some stuff sitting around it. Again, on the little table, pretty similar to the camera pick, but obviously of a different subject. So yeah, just find cool stuff that you use, your phone, camera, laptop, guitar, whatever it is you have, a watch, and just kind of try and find a cool spot for it, try and find a little scene that you can make up that makes a cool photo and snap it. They won't all go to plan, some things just are more photogenic than others and sometimes you just can't get the right setup or there's just a reflection on stuff or it does become hard and I've tried a few different ones and it didn't work but those are the ones that I tried that did work and I am going to try and take more pictures of the guitar thing and I might also try some self portraits with me playing the guitar because I think that'll look pretty cool. But yeah, give that one a go and see what you can come up with. So the one recurrent issue that I'm having with getting these photos, or at least getting good photos, is obviously the lighting, which may be one of the most important things in photography. Um, when you don't have your own lights, it's quite hard to get the exact shot you want because you're kind of hoping that you can angle things with the window and hoping that the light on that day is good and soft so that it lights up whatever your subject is pretty well. But sometimes the lighting just isn't great. You just have to try and work with what you've got. But one thing you can do to still get really cool photos is actually to use those shadows. Focus on them instead of trying to light everything well. Use the shadows like I did in this next picture. This was actually like around golden hour time. The sun was setting and the window was actually creating this cool shadow on the wall. And I thought if I could maybe create like a silhouette shot with something, get the sun to create that shadow on the wall. That would probably make for a pretty cool photo, and, and I think it did. I, I could have done a few things differently. The angle probably wasn't great that I had to cut that, but I thought if I hold a coffee cup in front of this, it, it probably looked pretty cool, and you could kind of see the steam. I did do a little bit of editing to make that steam a little more intense, but it did look pretty cool, and that's something you'll find around your house, especially like early morning or even time when the sun's set, and you'll notice these really dramatic shadows, especially from windows and like blinds and stuff. Even just the light and shadow pictures when the sun's shining through the windows looks cool in itself. But if you want to add a subject into it, you can make like a silhouette, which looks really cool too. If you're not sure what subject to use, you, you could actually use yourself. Stand in front of the window, create the shadow on the wall and take a picture of the wall with like your silhouette. Yeah, give it a go and see what you can come up with. Those type of pictures also make for really epic black and white shots too, if that's something that you're into. And the final photo idea that you can do at home is probably one of the easiest and also probably one of the coolest and that is to wait for the rain just like it's doing outside now or you could probably get a hose too and spray your windows with water but the rain tends to look better uh, i'm not sure why but the little beads of water seem to be better on the window when it actually rains but you can't fake it if you want what I would recommend for these shots is to use your lens with the lowest aperture or set your camera to the lowest aperture that it can go. Get really close to the window and make sure you're focused perfectly on those little beads of water. I tend to use manual focus just so I can pick the exact spot it's focusing on because sometimes when you do those type of shots the camera can actually find it hard to focus. But I like to use manual mode to get exactly where I want it to focus so that it's perfectly sharp because in these photos it's all about the sharpness of those little beads of water and the sharper you can get it the better the photo. I really love these kind of shots, they're so simple and they're just, I don't know, they're so satisfying to look at and they also make for great wallpapers on your phone. And that's all the photo ideas I have for this one guys, like I said, it didn't go to plan, I wanted to get more shots, more like behind the scenes of each shot I was getting, but every time I tried it, I had problems with lighting and I just couldn't get the shot I wanted, which was rather annoying, but I thought I'd make it into a video anyway, because I wanted to finish it and put it together, I know there's, there's some cool ideas in there I think that you guys could try. And, Hopefully you enjoy trying to get cool pictures at home. If you want to see more of our photos guys, then drop us a follow on Instagram. Our name will be here and the link will be in the description. Hopefully you enjoyed this one though. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button below so you can keep up to date with all our videos during the whole quarantine thing. And that's about it for this one. So as we always say, take it easy. Don't be a stranger.